Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless pride month 2023 is shaping up to be the most contentious one ever as the corporate world aims to silence christians and conservatives outdoor clothing brand north face deploys drag queen yelling come out for summer of pride Hi, it's me, Patagonia, a real-life homosexual, and today I'm here with the North Face. We are here to invite you to come out in nature with us. Wow, this is nice. We like to call this little tour the Summer of Pride. This tour has everything. Hiking, community, art, lesbians, lesbians making art. Last year, we gay saw shade across the nation and celebrated pride across the nation with hundreds of you across the nation. This year, we're back, back, back again with two new stops. Atlanta, GA. Why? Because you're there. In Salt Lake City, we're coming for you. Patty, can we go? Of course. This year, all these fabulous speakers will be coming from inside this TV to a nature near you. So come outside and celebrate the beautiful LGHG TV community. It's pretty gay. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil. Where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 1728 28-30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19-1-5 now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Young is the Hebrew word, nar, which means a boy from the age of infancy to adolescence. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, 
making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Disneyland hires princess with mustache to greet little girls at Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Everyone knows if I'm the nominee, I will beat Biden uh, and I will serve two terms and I will be able to uh, destroy leftism in this country and leave woke ideology on the dustbin of history. Now, politicians usually promise to unify the country. But DeSantis is preparing for battle. And that makes the ladies nervous. You want to fight all of us? Because you're going to be fighting your own women as well. Yeah. Because they're not going to take this ridiculousness that you are thrusting off you. It's not like they're voting for this. You are making these decisions for your state. We're watching you run. What does Yale University take anybody these days? Yeah. He went to Yale. He and will Harvard. destroy leftism. Really? That's a lot of well, those people in this terrible country. general election. Well, well, yes. <laughs> and and he, mean, will, he will get rid of wokeism. You know what? I yeah. am woke, and I'm proud of it, okay? There is a new religion that is moving like a tidal wave through every facet of Western culture, shaping and redefining society as it goes. This new religion disguises itself under the guise of compassion and justice, but underneath it is an evil ideology that is not compatible with Christian values. This new religion is called wokeism. Although it has not been organized into any formal religious structure, it has all the functions of religious doctrine. Wokeism has developed its own view of reality and with its own set of values and narratives. Wokeism falsely claims its own version of truth, justice, righteousness, sin, and judgment. The woke mob is trying to create a future utopian society liberated from what they claim to be an evil and oppressive system. The problem with being woke is, it views the world through what man determines to be moral and not what God says. The Bible tells us, our hearts are evil, as we read in Jeremiah 17.9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? The Bible tells us our ways are not God's ways, as we read in Isaiah 55, 8, and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now remember, Disney owns The View. It's on ABC. So when DeSantis goes after Disney, the ladies take it personally. But Joy, don't take it personally. Disney's just a perfect example of how woke the culture's gotten. Now, remember back in the day when we thought of a Disney princess? We thought of this. Just leave it to me. What a gown this will be. Why, it's like a dream. But Disney's reimagining the princess look. Disney now likes the princess with the mustache. So my name's Nick. I'm one of the fairy godmothers of princesses. I'm here to shop you around and make all your selections for the day. Look at my fairy godmother. He's so cute. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, why does that princess have chest hair? Well, little Susie, that's not Cinderella. It's Cinderfella. And for $250, anybody can get a makeover in Cinderfella's castle. If little Johnny wants heels and lipstick, little Johnny's getting heels and lipstick. So open your wallet, and a grown man can throw glitter on your son. It's what Walt would have wanted. The magic kingdom where they wave a wand and your son's testosterone disappears. Line up, you never know who you could run into there. And when you ride Splash Mountain, don't forget to rock your Tuckum swimsuit. Target has you covered. At Target, if you disagree with selling Tuckums to toddlers, then they'll fire you faster than a Keystone Pipeline worker. Here's the head of diversity. Not everyone is going to believe or be bought into our strategies and our priorities on this topic. They just aren't. 
okay, you don't nest like we may not be able to change your mind shift on appreciating why this is important, but you do understand that as a part of your job responsibilities, you will lead inclusively, you will have representation on your team, you will be responsible for these behaviors, values, and expectations. You still have to do it to do this job, to be a part of this company. You're not inclusive enough for a trans satanic clothing line for kids? Well, clean out your locker. Well, well, that's kind of what everyone's doing, Target. In 10 days, your company lost $10 billion. So why is corporate America Bud Lighting themselves? Because this is about more than just money. The people who are forcing these companies to Bud Light themselves already have enough money. They have so much money, they're looking for things to do. Who are these companies? It's companies like Vanguard, BlackRock, the companies that own major stakes in Target or Disney. So with all that shareholder clout, they can force these companies to do whatever they want. They confess this is what they're doing. Behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. What we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? You have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. Kohl's is the latest big retailer now that's facing calls for a shopper boycott. This after the company offered a new line of pride clothing for kids and babies. You might remember Target and Bud Light both took financial hits after their consumers rejected similar marketing earlier in the year. Uh, some of the reaction we're seeing on social media is pretty stinging. Like this, Kohl's is pushing LGBTQ pride for literal babies. Yeah. Critics say it's all just virtue signaling and that eventually this is going to hurt the company's bottom line. Take a listen. They do it because they're stupid. They don't understand that their core business is not offending half the people of America. And they keep doing it because they hire these young 20-something-year-old uh, marketing geniuses who think that their real job is to go out and uh, sort of pander to people on the extreme fringe. It's not about tolerance and diversity. It's about shoving stuff down people's throat they just simply don't want. So whether it's Bud Light or whether it's Target or North Face, uh, these companies have lost their uh, collective minds. Supporters, Jackie, obviously say that this is the company offering um, a marketing plan that is supportive of kids and I guess babies in America who live in households and families that are headed up by gay couples. Well, and that's the thing, right? It's not the kids and the babies that are making the purchases, Jillian. It's their parents. And so what are companies like this doing, to Governor Huckabee's point? They're catering to those parents, and they're catering to, to, you know, part of the country, a fringe part of the country. If you look at the last few elections, you can tell that this country is very polarized, and, and the elections were very close. So you've got a 50-50 kind of split here. Spiritual warfare is off the charts. Battle lines are being drawn, and people are choosing sides. The United States is divided on just about every issue. Race, homosexuality, transgenderism, abortion, climate change, gun rights, and the list goes on. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, as we read in Matthew 12, 25. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Jesus tells us he is the reason behind the division we are seeing today as we read in Luke 12, 51 through 53. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Jesus then goes on to rebuke the multitudes for not knowing the time they were living in, as we read in Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites! You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, 
but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Jesus now goes on to tell a parable about his true followers and those who are not, as we read in Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us to then go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus went on to explain the parable of the wheat and tares, as we read in Matthew 13, 36 through 43. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Those who genuinely follow Jesus are the wheat, and those who don't are the tares. I believe we are witnessing the wheat being separated from the tares. Are you a wheat or a tear? Almost everything in this world has been perverted. The truth is being turned into lies and lies into the truth. Nothing seems to make sense anymore, at least to a righteous person, those that believe in Jesus Christ. All right, my next guest says AI could wipe out conservative thought altogether and Americans need to wake up. Dan Schneider is the vice president of MRC Free Speech America, and he joins me now. Dan, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, how exactly is artificial intelligence destroying conservative thought? Well, we haven't seen it quite yet, but it, it's a growing trend. It's a growing danger. We do know how AI works. AI works by collecting all the data that's out there in the universe uh, when done properly. And it gives a result that basically is the mean uh, average. Uh, but we know that the, the, the big tech oligarchs who have a great history, a terrible great history of destroying conservative speech, of censoring us, they're the same people involved in writing the algorithms. They're already trying to, to clean the internet of our views. They're trying to cancel us, and that's going to be an ever greater threat when AI eliminates our perspective in their search results. If that is the worry and that's the concern that that could happen, is it, is it something that conservatives can put a stop to? Well, Congress needs to act right away. Democrats in Congress and in the executive branch know that AI is the single greatest tool they've ever had to destroy their opposition, to destroy the very idea that America was founded on. We have to act right away to stop these big tech executives. And of course, we see what's well, going on how, in China, how? too. How so? How, a, well, a, look, how is it such a threat? And B, how do we stop them? AI should and could be a very great tool to create value for all of us. But AI is also going to be used against us, just like the social media platforms have, have sent, silenced us and censored us. But this is going to be an even greater threat than social media silencing us. This is going to be substituting their truth, the left-wing truth, for our truth. Larry Page, the co-founder of Google, has already announced that, that he wants AI to be a digital god, a digital god that gives 
and this is his words, wants to give the right responses, the right truth, not, not the truth that the rest of us can discern on our own, but what, what the big tech executives want to feed to us as the truth that we are supposed to believe or else. Is there such a thing as absolute truth? The unsaved hold the view there is no right or wrong. Therefore, whatever feels or seems right at the time and in that situation is right. Christians hold the view that there are indeed absolute realities and standards that define what is true and what is not. To the unsaved, tolerance has become the one cardinal virtue of the postmodern society, the one absolute, and therefore, intolerance is the only evil. Any dogmatic belief, especially a belief in absolute truth, is viewed as intolerance, the ultimate sin to an unbeliever. If there is absolute truth, then there are absolute standards of right and wrong, and we are accountable to those standards. This accountability is what people are really rejecting when they reject absolute truth. The denial of absolute truth and the cultural relativism that comes with it are the logical result of a society that has embraced the theory of evolution as the explanation for life. If evolution is true, then life has no meaning, we have no purpose, and there cannot be any absolute right or wrong. Man is then free to live as he pleases and is accountable to no one for his actions. Yet, no matter how much sinful men deny the existence of God and absolute truth, they still will someday stand before God in judgment. The Bible declares this in Romans 1, 19-22, Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Is there any evidence for the existence of absolute truth? Yes, there is the human conscience, that certain something within us that tells us the world should be a certain way, that some things are right and some things are wrong. Our conscience convinces us there is something wrong with suffering, pain, and evil, and it makes us aware that love, generosity, compassion, and peace are positive things for which we should strive. The Bible describes the role of the human conscience as we read in Romans 2, 14 through 16. For when Gentiles, who do not have the law, by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves, their thoughts accusing or else excusing them in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. God has revealed his truth to us through his word, the Bible. Knowing absolute truth is only possible through a personal relationship with the one who claims to be the truth, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and the only path to God. The fact that absolute truth does exist points us to the truth that there is a sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth and who has revealed himself to mankind in order that we might know him personally through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the absolute truth. Governor DeSantis says he is running for president to destroy leftism. Listen here. Everyone knows if I'm the nominee, I will beat Biden uh, and I will serve two terms and I will be able to uh, destroy leftism in this country and leave woke ideology on the dustbin of history. I think there's a reason why the legacy media is attacking me uh, more than they're attacking anybody else, because I think they realize that if I'm successful in winning the Republican nomination, uh, we're going to bring it home in the general election. Is he right, Dan? <laughs> well, you know, Governor DeSantis is running against the same people that Donald Trump is running against, that Vivek is running against, that Nikki Haley is running against. They are running against the legacy media. You know, if you're a Republican candidate for president or anything else, you're not going to get a fair shake from legacy media or, or social media, big tech executives. It's a constant battle to try to get to the American public real answers, the real truth, because legacy media does not want people to know the truth. I feel like we're living in two Americas right now. A certain group of people think one thing and the polar opposite for another group. The Bible teaches us not to follow after philosophers and deceivers of the world, as we read in Colossians 2.8.
Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. As we watch world events unfold, it is as if we are all watching the same movie. Yet at the same time, Christians and unbelievers are seeing two separate stories. Christians are watching world events unfold, just as the Bible said it would, right before Jesus returns. Christians long for Christ's return, as we are looking forward to the day He rules and reigns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We look forward to a day when there will be no more lawlessness, a time of peace and harmony with all creation. Unbelievers, on the other hand, are trying to create their own utopian society, where lawlessness runs unchecked and every kind of evil is thought to be good. Christians have been given the Spirit of God as a gift, as we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 16. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, speaking of the unsaved, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Paul goes on to say this in Galatians 6, 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. The unsaved are doing the desires of their father the devil, as we read in John 8:44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The reality at the end of these two stories also have different outcomes. The prophet Daniel put it succinctly, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Which do you choose, everlasting life or shame and everlasting contempt? It's up to you, eternity with God or eternity in the lake of fire. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. A bombshell new report reveals the Biden administration is using taxpayer money to rage a covert war on conservatives and Christian groups. The Media Research Center, a conservative watchdog group, obtaining documents showing DHS, Department of Homeland Security, is using a program meant to fight terrorists, which includes groups like the Heritage Foundation, MAGA, Fox News, even the Republican National Committee in the same category as Nazis. Joining me right now is Media Research Center founder and president Brent Bozal. Brent, it's Great to have you this morning. We want to know more about this. Tell us what you found in this so-called pyramid of far-right radicalization. It's an astonishing finding, Maria. We, there, there's the program called the Targeted Violence and Terrorism uh, Prevention Grant Program. This is supposed to find uh, domestic terrorists in America. It was started by Obama. There was concerned by Republicans that it would be weaponized against Republicans and conservatives. Trump put, put the kibosh on it. It's come back now with Joe Biden. Look at that pyramid. This was a conference in December of 2021. In the first la la layer, you've got Heritage, you've got the uh, Bright, uh, you've got Fox News, you've got Christian Broadcasting, you've got the Republican National Committee. Already you got more than half of America is on the list. The second level torques it up. More dangerous groups, Turning Point USA, Tea Party Patriots, Prager U, Breitbart, that American conservative unit. Then the third level is pro-Nazi organizations. And the top one is militant Nazi organizations. So there you go, the pyramid, showing the progression of domestic terrorism. But listen to this. I want you to hear this, what, 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 what they were actually doing in this conference. One speaker was associating Ron DeSantis with the Holocaust. Unbelievable. One speaker was associating Donald Trump with Pol Pot. The, the uh, uh, genocide guy. One speaker did this. He advocated 
programs to deny people to shut down their websites, to close their meetings, and to physically prevent them from assembling in public. Physically prevent them from assembling in, in, in public. Physically. Yeah. Put it all together, and it goes on. And by the way, that speaker also said, and this is, this is a quote that we, we have to remember, he's a member of Antifa. He said, a lot of things we are doing are illegal. A lot of it involves breaking the law. Yeah. They put it all together. They wrapped it up. They sent it to the DHS, and DHS awarded them a grant of $358,000 to continue doing it. Wow. And, and this is why the Republicans continue to say that this administration looks for terrorists of, of, in America, uh, whether it's parents, you know, going after parents because they want to know more about their kids in school, rather than going after China as an adversary. You're calling now for the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to step down. I mean, there have been calls to impeach this guy over the border, and now this. Well, you've got him, you've got him testifying in Congress and lying through his teeth about the border. Everybody knows he's lying. All you have to do is look at the video. But now you've got this, where he's taking government funding meant to find terrorists, and he's going after Fox News. He believes, Maria, you're a terrorist. I'm a terrorist. Anybody with the RNC is a terrorist. Anyone supporting uh, uh, reading Breitbart, the Christian Broadcasting Network, for the love of God, the Heritage Foundation, the most prestigious conservative think tank in America, mm. all have now been targeted as associated to one degree or another with terrorism. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Time is very short, so snatch as many friends, family, and others from the fire as you can. Jude 123. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. As Christians, we should be woke to the fact Jesus is returning very soon. Revelation 22, 20, and 21. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.